Dear brothers and uh, sisters, the main theme of today's readings is the cost of discipleship, perseverance in adversity. In India, one of the states, West Bengal, a man lived, his name was Madhavan. He was a Hindu. And somehow he came to know about Jesus and he received a baptism. He became a Christian. And then he became a Protestant missionary. And recently it was his daughter's wedding, so all his family members remained Hindus, only he became a Christian. So his daughter's wedding was going on, and his family members, his neighbors, his people asked him, as the father, you have to perform the wedding ceremonies in Hindu tradition. So you have to become a Hindu for two hours for your daughter's wedding. So he said, I will not reject Jesus for two minutes. His family members, his own people became angry and they attacked him, they killed him and they burned his body. In today's Gospel, we have heard from the Gospel according to St. Luke chapter 12. Last Sunday, we heard about the second coming of Jesus and we are asked to prepare to receive him. And today's Gospel, Jesus is talking about his first coming. And he said, I came to set the earth on fire. And what is this fire? When we go through the Bible, fire is a symbolic word which represents the presence of God. The book of Exodus, Moses experienced the presence of God in the burning bush. Or in the Acts of the Apostles, the Holy Spirit came down in the form of tongues of fire. The journey of the Israelites, the people of God from the land of Egypt to the promised land, God was with them in the pillar of fire. So fire symbolizes the presence of God. According to the words of the prophets, fire is the wrath of God, the anger of God, the judgment of God. And also the book of wisdom, fire is the symbol of purification. It will say that like gold in the furnace, there will be chastisement. So fire represents all these. John the Baptist said, I baptize you with water, but the one who is coming after me will baptize you with spirit and fire. So fire is the presence of the Lord, the judgment of the Lord, the Holy Spirit. So we can say it is the kingdom of God. And when Jesus began his public ministry, he began it by saying the kingdom of God is at hand. There, it is there, the presence of the Lord is there and he will judge and he will give us a chance of purification. So all these are the different characteristics of the kingdom of God. And then Jesus speaks about 
his own suffering and the sufferings of the followers of Jesus. He said, I have a baptism to be received. And this baptism means the suffering of Jesus. A cup and the baptism metaphorically speaks about the suffering of Jesus. That's why when James and John came to Jesus and asked for two important, important positions in the kingdom, Jesus asked them, are you ready to receive the baptism that I am going to be baptized? Or are you able to drink the cup I drink? So the baptism and cup is the suffering of Jesus. And after that, Jesus is telling them that I brought division two against three or three against two, father against son, son against father. I brought division. And that's what uh, I told you in the beginning, your own family members will be against you. And that's what we have heard the first reading from the book of Prophet Jeremiah chapter 38. His own friends or his own family members were against Jeremiah. When God called Jeremiah to be a prophet, God, Jeremiah told God, God, I am too young to be a prophet. And God told him, don't tell me that you are too young. Before I formed you in your mother's womb, I knew you, I consecrated you, I appointed you, and I will not allow your enemies to prevail over you. I will be with you. And what we have heard today, at that time, Babylon became a, an emerging power, a prominent power in the Mesopotamia and the Middle East area. Babylon, the present day Iraq. So they began to conquer the small kingdoms around them. And they planned to attack Judea and Jerusalem. At that time, the people of Judea and Jerusalem, they were going away from God, so the wrath of God was there. So God through the prophets prophesied that they will go to exile again because of their sinfulness. So this time Babylon decided to attack Judea and Jerusalem. The military surrounded this place and then God told Jeremiah to go and speak to the king, Sedekiah. Jeremiah went to Sadakiah and said, go and surrender to the king of Babylon. If you are going to attack them back, they will come and destroy Jerusalem. People will be killed. So in order to avoid that, you go there and you surrender in front of the king of Babylon. But we know that because of the prophecy of Jeremiah, the people, the court officials were against him and they told the king that the one, the prophet Jeremiah, who told you to surrender yourself in front of the king of Babylon, he is a traitor, he is not a patriot. So we have to kill him. The king said, Jeremiah is there, you go and do whatever you want. So Jeremiah was thrown into a cistern filled with mud. There, one of the Kushite, an Ethiopian, his name was given as Abad Malek. Abad Malek means the servant of the king. He was an Ethiopian. He went to the king and said, he is a prophet. He is going to die in the well, in this cistern. So we have to save him. Again, the king said, 
you go take three people with you and save him from the sister this man abd malik went with three people and saved the life of prophet jeremiah as a reward we see later that god protected this ethiopian from the attack of babylonians so my dear brothers and sisters the first reading today speak about the suffering of jeremiah because of his faithfulness to the word of god he suffered from his own people his own family members relatives and friends and then coming to the second reading today the letter of saint paul to hebrews the hebrews were the judeo christian community jewish people became christians the followers of jesus and there what happened because they followed jesus their fellow jews they expelled them from the synagogues their family members cut off their relationship with them they missed their religious rituals they are expelled from the community so that point paul is strengthening them by saying that you are surrounded by a cloud of witnesses who are these cloud of witnesses those who suffered before you the heroes of faith from abraham itself the old testament people who suffered the prophets who were killed so you are now in a race and you are not alone all these heroes of the old testament who died for their faithfulness to god they are here to support you to cheer what do you have to do you have to run your race fixing your eyes on jesus christ so my dear brothers and sisters paul is strengthening the hebrew community strengthening them by saying that those who died those the, the, the greek term for witness is martyr so those who died for their faith they are here to strengthen you so dear brothers and sisters as we meditate upon today's readings as jesus spoke about his own suffering and the suffering of his followers and what jeremiah suffered what the hebrew community suffered we have to think about our own faith life one of the greatest dangers of today's christian faith is that we give a lot of importance to prosperity if you go to the church if you read the bible you will receive certain things material goods material benefits we call it the prosperity gospel we don't have place for cross where is the place of suffering we don't want to hear that but actually what jesus said if you want to follow me deny yourself take up the cross and follow me so dear brothers and sisters if we are a true follower of jesus there will be suffering it's not always prosperity and material benefits no we have to ask ourselves is there a place for cross in my life in my relationship with jesus saint paul in his letter to philippians will say you are blessed not only to believe in the name of jesus you are blessed to participate in the suffering of jesus do we consider suffering as a blessing we have to think about it recently one of the priest in nigeria we know that what's going on in nigeria persecutions a priest who was telling we are afraid of our faith or because we are afraid of our life but we are not going to stop 
preaching Jesus. So dear brothers and sisters, we are blessed. Nobody is here to kill you because of your faith. We have a lot of opportunities. Our children, we have ECC for our youth, for our adults. We have enough opportunities to grow in our faith. Do we make use of it? We are complaining for very small things because we don't have anything else to do. We are not worried about our life. We don't face any persecutions. My dear brothers and sisters, just imagine you are not sure if, you know, if, you, if we are not sure what is going to happen to me next moment because of my faith. So my dear brothers and sisters, let us ask ourselves about our faith. Are we ready to suffer for Jesus? Is there a place for cross in my life? God bless you. Amen.